So what do you think it takes to be a successful VC and entrepreneur? Uh, could you give your advice and guidance to our viewers? Yeah. Um, so I've personally, I've done several companies myself. One is um, Exodus Communications between 94 and 2000. And then between 2000 and 2007, I did another company called Netscaler. And then I did uh, uh, Three Leaf Systems and Vertella and all of that. And, and today I'm like an angel investor and I'm investing in uh, a whole bunch of companies. I, I also started to invest like uh, late 90s, early 2000s in various companies. And I have seen both success and failures during the course of this 15 years of my investment journey. And what I see is there is a common thread for companies that have become successful. And these common threads, if you look at, the number one is producing a product that the market wants and product as a painkiller rather than a vitamin. So something that is nice to have versus something that market wants it is the is the is the is the focus that an entrepreneur should have not that if i produce a nice to have product i cannot build a successful company but what i have seen is it is a lot more challenging when you have a product that is a nice to have to get early tractions to uh, uh, even re-engineer the product eventually to make it more useful to the customer and the whole thing takes a lot longer than you anticipate, which means you need more time, you need more money, you need a lot more resources, right? And obviously the risk increases significantly during the process. So you can focus as an entrepreneur to identify and solve problems that are more a must have or a painkiller rather than a nice to have or a vitamin. That's number one. Number two is winning the early 15, 20 customers. I mean, that's actually a very hard part. So it calls for a lot of discipline from identifying who the customers who would be willing to buy your product and what the markets are and what the applications are that would be willing to buy your product, right? Where the value of your product is uh, that, uh, is seen by the customer. So picking and identifying these customers and winning the first uh, uh, one, one and a half years after you generate the product, right, I think is a very important element. And the third most important is the financial discipline. So financial discipline is very, very important uh, no matter how much money is in the bank. I mean, I have seen entrepreneurs when they have more money sitting in the bank or when a venture capitalist funds a lot of money at a very high valuation, you know, they tend to blow up the finances, right, without much discipline. And it, it, it just brings a bad uh, behavior from an entrepreneur perspective and it just poses a huge challenge later on either to raise the next round of funding or for you to cut down you know, those expenses, unwanted expenses that you are incurring in the company. So in summary, if you can focus on building or producing products that the market wants as a must have product rather than a nice to have product, which is more like a painkiller versus a vitamin. And number two, winning that initial 15, 20 customers, very precisely identifying the customers, the applications, and the markets, right? And that kind of sets the foundation for the growth of your company. And the third is the financial discipline. No matter what your revenues are, no matter how much money you have in the bank, right? Following that discipline all the time, it helps you to... Uh, uh, build your company with some discipline and in the long run actually that helps in hiring right kind of people in spending the right kind of dollars for the right kind of purpose.